Minneapolis, Minnesota. Still hold strong. Shane Battier, Duke University. Jason Williams, Duke University. University of Arizona. Jason, Jason Gardner, University of Arizona. A team riding incredibly high on emotion is now playing Monday night at the championship game. The national championship. The national championship. The national championship. The national championship. Duke, Arizona. The two that will vie for the national crown. CBA Sports presentation, a prelude to a championship. He sponsored. Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes, and tonight, Minneapolis is the land of two teams, Arizona and Duke. And beneath this distinctive Teflon bubble, the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome is awash in a sea of red and blue, the team colors of the Wildcats and the Blue Devils. Arizona is looking for its second national title in five years. Duke returns to the very court where it won its second and last NCAA crown nine years ago. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to Prelude to a Championship as CBS Sports proudly broadcasts its 20th consecutive NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. At the end of the evening, this coveted trophy will be presented to either Arizona or Duke. Our tip time is 9:18 Eastern. And what an emotional night this is for both teams, in particular for Arizona head coach Lute Olson, whose wife Bobby succumbed to cancer on New Year's Day. Coach Olson's two daughters and two of his grandchildren were with him as Arizona arrived tonight. Right now, it's my pleasure to introduce my co-host, Special K, Clark Kellogg, and the most outstanding player of the 1972 and 73 Final Fours, Bill Walton. Gentlemen, let's start with Arizona. Both these teams have some injury problems. Gilbert Arenas on Saturday suffered a right shoulder contusion. He told our Armin Katayan a short while ago that he is at best 50% for the game. What does that mean? Greg, so much hinges on that right wing for Gilbert Arenas. If he can't go, if he's ineffective, then Lou Dolson will be Arizona Wildcats they move Richard Jefferson to the backcourt and they go big up front but there are so many questions for Arizona tonight Michael Wright the power presence inside can he play the transition game can he defend the three-point shot then you got Richard Jefferson with a dynamic athleticism and his versatility will he be disciplined enough mentally can he stay out of the foul trouble that has plagued him at times this year and then there's Jason Gardner who has been the team's best player of late he will like the rest of the team have to have the game of his life tonight conditioning will be a factor most importantly for Arizona though will be their mental state can they continue the relentless attack that carried them to that dominating victory against Michigan State on Saturday night all right Bill Duke also has its injury concerns Chris Duhon took what looked to be a horrific fall on Saturday he suffered a mild concussion Clark you talk about Chris Duhon, his effectiveness is critical to what Duke likes to do defensively because of his ability to pressure the ball. But Shane Battier, the consensus All-America, has carried this Blue Devil team all season long. He's delivered in a big way time and time again. He'll face his toughest challenge from the Arizona Wildcats defense. And Jason Williams will match up with Jason Gardner in the backcourt. That is a delicious matchup, one I'll have isolated camera on. Although Jason is taller, Jason Williams that is, he'll meet a guy in Jason Gardner, who's just as quick and just as strong. It should be a tremendous match. I agree with you, gentlemen. A timeout prelude to a championship will continue live from Minneapolis in a moment. Prelude to a championship. A short time ago, our Armin Katayan caught up with one of the Wildcats. I'm with Lauren Woods. Lauren, I'm sure your thoughts with the team today have been dominant about this game. What have been the dominant thoughts for you today? Uh, you know, we, we just want to come out and just play 40 minutes uh, of hard basketball. Um, you know, it's, it's our last 40 minutes. Uh, emotions are high. Uh, as as, as uh, I'm sure Duke's emotional level is high also. But, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great game. How big of a motivating factor is Bobby Olson in her memory and winning a national championship for her and Coach Olson? 
Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of motivation for us. Uh, certainly, uh, Mrs. O is, is always going to be with us. Uh, her spirit is, has been with us for the whole season. So, uh, you know, of, of course, this season is dedicated to her. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, also, it's also in our hands. You know, we, we have to do what we have to do to, uh, to win the game. And, you know, we're, we're, I think we're ready. All right. Thanks a lot, Lauren. Good luck. Armin, thank you. And with more on the status of the Blue Devils, Chris Duhon, let's check in now with Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie. Hi, Greg. Well, Duhon is slated to start. He did not practice yesterday, but went harder than any other player today at shoot-around. The coaches ran him for about 15 minutes just to see how he reacted when he broke a sweat. His head was still bothering him a little bit, but he assured me yesterday he's been taking plenty of aspirin. Now, last night after the team meeting, Coach K showed his players a highlight reel of some of the best plays of the season. He told them, I want you to go to bed thinking only positive thoughts. And one last note, Duke actually switched locker rooms today. Coach K told me this one's a bigger locker room, but he also added, if you want to mention, this was the locker room where we won the national title in 1992. Well, that's just fine, Greg. All right, Bonnie, thank you. All right, your last moment. Bill, pick this game. Duke is the favorite, has everything going for it, but Arizona will win it quite possibly in overtime. I Clark. think Arizona earns the title because of their defensive versatility and their offensive balance. All right, gentlemen, prelude to a championship will continue here on CBS in just a moment. Prelude to a championship is sponsored by Honda. A winning lineup of cars, sport utility vehicles, and minivans. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Tonight, the gentlemen who will call our national championship game begin their second decade together as partners. I'm pleased to send it over to my CBS Sports colleagues, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Gentlemen. Thank you so much, Greg. 11 years at all. You're so fired up, you forgot your mic well, until the last well, second. You, <laughs> Jim, I would have hey, and really, in all our years, this is about as anticipated a matchup as we've had in the championship game. Jim, it's really been a glorious college basketball season, and really the way to finish everything off here. They were 1-1-A one, one before it all got started they'll settle things right out in the court tonight Arizona Duke preseason one and two it's a motion against will and uh, look at this right here one seed beaten three times by Arizona in its championship run of 97 only time in tournament history anybody beat three ones the maximum possible on the way to the title they've already knocked off two this would be their third tonight if the Wildcats were to defeat Duke they would become then just the second both by Arizona and the Blue Devils are taking the floor but let's talk about Arizona what they must do here partner well Michael Wright came to play he went three halves without scoring a field goal but took off against Michigan State Lauren Woods has blocked 20 shots in this NCAA tournament and whether he's standing flat on the ground or going up in the sky he has really been a one-man defense on the inside for Arizona and Gilbert Arenas, six steals in the semifinals to set a new NCAA semifinal record. Not only did he steal, but he started the offense with his steals. The defense became the offense for Arizona in whipping Michigan State. All right, Billy, break down the Blue Devils of Duke tonight. Well, I thought a great game plan by Maryland. Take away the three-point shot of Duke early. But Jason Williams is such a versatile player. He put the penetration move on and went inside and finished better than any point guard in the country can. Shane Battier, seven straight 20-point games, but what makes him so great is his defensive ability, shutting off anything that comes down inside. And of course, the big difference for Duke in this game really could be important is Carlos Boozer is back, and he provides a force offensively down in the low post for Mike Krzyzewski. It is absolutely electric inside the Metrodome. Arizona Duke, the lineups in just a moment. Based on the true story that shocked. Exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Championship game is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, Agilent Technologies, American Express, and by Budweiser. Back in Minneapolis, national championship night here, and now the starting lineups with Jackie Bow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's championship game between the University of Arizona's Wildcats and the Duke University Blue Devils. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward for Arizona, junior listed at 6'7 from Chicago, Illinois, wearing number two, Michael Wright. 
forward for two. A sophomore listed at 6'8 from Lake Oswego, Oregon, number 34, Mike Dunleavy. At forward for Arizona, a junior listed at 6'7 from Phoenix, Arizona, number 44, Richard Jefferson. At forward for two, a senior listed at 6'8 from Birmingham, Michigan, number 31, Shane Pettier. At center for Arizona, a senior listed at 7'1 from St. Louis, Missouri, wearing number three, Lauren Woods. At center for Duke, a sophomore listed at 6'11 from Tampa, Florida, number 20, Casey Sanders. At guard for Arizona, a sophomore listed at 6'3 from North Hollywood, California, number zero, Gilbert Arenas. At guard for Duke, a freshman listed at 6'1 from Slidell, Louisiana, number 21, Chris Duhon. At guard for Arizona, a sophomore listed at 5'10 from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 22, Jason Gardner. And at guard for Duke, a sophomore listed at 6'2 from Plainfield, New Jersey, number 22, Jason Williams. The head coach for Arizona, Luke Olson. And for Duke, Mike Krzyzewski. These two coaches have met five times. They've been great battles. The biggest margin of victory was only eight. There were two two-point games and a double overtime game. So they've all been thrillers. And Billy, what do you have for us tonight with the Packer points? Well, Jim, three is the number. Three, if Duke wins, will be the number of national championships for Mike Krzyzewski. But three is also the number of their shooting. They've had 398 threes they've made on the year, which is a new NCAA record. Boozer's breakout. He broke out in the game against Maryland. His contribution is so important. 19 points in that game in just 25 minutes. He could be a factor inside. He's mine. That is Mr. Jefferson. His defensive assignments have been amazing, and he has really taken on the challenge. Stopping Frankie Williams and Jason Richardson, he has been outstanding. And Woods' is homecoming. A lot of people don't realize this, but Lauren Woods started his career in the ACC where he played under Tim Duncan at Wake Forest, and he has seen the Duke Blue Devils before. He's been quite a factor inside defensively. He'll have to do it again tonight. The Blue Devils have never lost inside of this arena. Their last championship was won here in 1992. Tonight seeking twin championships here in the Twin Cities. Battier saw him a moment ago, his last game in a Duke uniform. The officials include Gerald Boudreaux working his third straight national championship game. Jim, I think the first time down the floor when we see who Jefferson is going to guard, it's going to tell us a lot about the thinking of Lute Olsen in this game. Is it Battier or is it Williams? Tipped out to Woods in Arizona with first possession. And Battier is going to take Woods on the inside. That kind of surprised me. I thought it'd be Sanders. Woods dumps it inside. Jefferson. Yes. Jefferson's going to be a tough matchup for Dunleavy, who's giving up a lot of power. And it looks like it's not going to be either. It's a zone. A matchup zone by Arizona. They really did a great job changing up their defenses when they played against Michigan State. Jason Williams short on the three. He struggled from behind the arc Saturday. Ball picked up by Duhon. Williams good head fake. Here comes the trailer. Dunleavy. Battier on the follow. He'll head to the line. Dunleavy missed some e easy openings early in the basketball game the other day against Maryland. He has got to be able to finish. Duke's road to the title game through Monmouth and Missouri, then UCLA and USC knocked out from Philadelphia and Maryland for the third time in the season. Biggest comeback in Final Four history pulled off by Duke. 22-point deficit, 33-point turnaround. Arenas called on the foul. Battier missing on the first. Jim Arenas is holding his uh, right underneath his throat. I don't know if he's already been affected, but you can see he's got that shirt on. We'll see how 
flexible he is, particularly if he has to go and reach for a rebound or a steal. Armin Katayan reported in the pregame show that he's only 50% tonight. Woods gets it down low. Left hand, good again for the Wildcats. Their first two trips, working it inside both times. Matty A giving up a lot of size right there, and I'm really surprised it's not Sanders. They stay right in that matchup zone. And they send Boozer in. He'll be checking in in a moment. That's deflected by Michael Wright. And Woods on the baseline. Good ball. Trying to call timeout. Good job by Wright getting out there. And here's that half hook. I really think Batty A's given up too much size to be able to handle Lauren Woods if Woods is going to get the ball in that low, lower position. Boozer comes in right away, and that's going to force Woods to have to play a, a low post player that's going to score. A minute 15 into the game for one of the real stars of that comeback victory on Saturday. Williams on the drive. Oh, what a move. That was a man to man on the out of bounds situation. Williams took advantage of it. Gardner not even close to staying in front of it. And it still is. Battier on Woods. He's got to play in front of him and get some help on the lob. Michael Wright steps past Boozer, has it deflected, and Dunleavy flies through for the rebound. Excellent block by both Battier and Boozer on that one. Three pointer, short. But well, we can see what's happening right there. Is Battier, if they're going to play man to man and Woods is going to guard him, Battier is going to pull him outside for the jump shots. Right by Gardner. No help inside because, as usual, Jason Williams will use that rim to ward off the defender. He uses the cylinder about as well as oh, anyone. He, He's good he for really one does. of those a game, at least. So we have Williams on Arenas. Arenas moves very well without the ball and normally would be looking for some lobs against a smaller man. Woods moving on Battier. He's made now two terrific inside moves. I really wonder about that matchup. Again, I think that Battier given up so much size, and there goes Arizona back to their matchup 1 2 2 zone. Taking it right to the national defensive player of the year in most circles. And I really think if Duke against this zone tries to spend all their time on the perimeter instead of going inside, they're not going to get the looks. Suddenly they guns a three. They go inside, pump it back out. This matchup zone will be hard to handle if all you're going to do is perimeter pass. Here's Arenas' first move. Arenas had a lot about going out on him. And Arenas with that sore shoulder, though, hits his first shot of the night. So far, Jim, Arizona having no trouble whatsoever getting the kind of looks and shots against Duke. Dunleavy. Boozer, did he touch it last? Yes, Arizona ball. Good job by Jefferson going in behind him. We'll see Woods really taking advantage of Battier, who is much better at guarding either a power forward or a small forward. To play a postman as gifted as Woods, who can play at 7-1 over the top of him. It's a real tough assignment. Like see Battier trying to get in front of him, but Woods is a target we can throw over him. Timeout has been called. Timeout called. Timeout called. Timeout called. Arizona pin in the corner. We'll be right back to Minneapolis. Arizona has played with a heavy heart this season. January 1st, Bobby Olson lost her struggle with cancer. She and Luke, just an inseparable team for 47 years. She was the Wildcats' first lady by all accounts. She was there on the floor four years ago celebrating the Cats National Championship. You know, Billy, they started their married life of all places right here in Minneapolis back in 1953. And I can say, after being here for a week, she is on the minds of every player, administrator, supporter of Arizona tonight. It is truly palpable. Ten on the shot clock after that timeout. Jefferson weaving his way through another close range attempt and Woods with the follow was fouled. Jim, you really get a feeling out here right now that Woods at seven foot one is playing over the top of everything that Duke throws at him. The Wildcats through the Midwest and their average margin of victory about 17 a game including a 19 point knockout of Michigan State on Saturday. It was a two point game at the half. What a superb second half execution by Arizona that really left Tom Izzo.
baffled about you know that team that was on the floor. He didn't even recognize his own team that that night, Saturday. Lauren Woods misses only for the second time in the NCAA tournament. He's now 25 for 27. That really helps when you've got a big man that can shoot some free throws. Nice pass. Boozer, though, unable to clutch it. Good throw. Boozer should have had his hands on that one. He had right in a bad position. Duke going full court pressure here. Trying to take away the advantage that Woods presents down in low. Oh, Jefferson just took his eye off of it. Turnover. And Lute Olsen saying to Woods, get the ball in the hands of Gardner against this press. Good move by Mike Krzyzewski, yeah. changing things up a little bit. Just the threat of a press. Trying to cause a turnover. Dunleavy steps in for the two. Good defense that time by Jefferson. Altered the shot. All air and Arenas brings it down the middle. Inside right, who warmed up in the second half against Michigan State with action like that. He was in a game and a half slump, though, before he got cooking against the Spartans. Jim, I really have not seen anybody handle Duke so easily offensively as what we're seeing out of Arizona right now. Boozer inside, and he's going to the line. Count the basket. A good attacking the defensive zone with the pass inside or the penetration inside instead of just relying on the three. Good move by Duke University here. Lauren Woods trying to stay out of foul trouble. When you take a look at one of Arizona's loss when they had everybody back together, that overtime loss in Los Angeles against UCLA, Dan Kudzurek played 41 minutes in that overtime. He had 22 points and 17 rebounds. Lauren Woods fouled out just one for five. So you have got to occupy him in the offensive low post as Duke's now doing with Boozer. Woods with five points. Arizona by two. Jim Nance and Billy Packer back at the national championship game with a singular sky cam, and Duke brings in Nate James, senior. Jim, that is the first crack we see in the coaching philosophy so far. I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski says we're too small to play this team. So out goes Duhan, in comes James. So Mike is going to try to match up with Luke. Here comes Duhan back in the game because of the foul. And the second foul on Williams. That is not what he was looking for at all. So he wanted to go with a bigger team, but with Williams out of there now, that really takes away a lot of the offensive penetration, particularly against the zone. Two fouls for the All-America in three minutes and 39 seconds. A big chip early on the Arizona side, but that one inside right for the number. There's a case where Boozer has got to allow James to try to stay with Arenas. The size of Woods on the inside with Wright. You can't afford to give it up. Nice pass. Snappy, but unable to finish. Dunleavy out rebound. Long rebound, Gardner. Nice push ahead on his own. Got the three. No, too long. Duhan comes out with the run. James pushes it ahead to Dunleavy. Duke will settle down. Duke is not settled down, though, Jim. They really are not in, in sync right now. Here we're back to the man-to-man -man situation with Williams out of the game. Boy, these coaches are really pulling the switches early here. And talking about switches, that's a switch well, for Battier from three. No matter who they put on Battier in, the, in regard to Ryder Woods, they can't match up with it. That's got to be Jefferson's man. Arenas drives, no foul, and Boozer clears for Duke. Good, strong rebound by Boozer. And here you see again, Lauren Woods stuck outside on Battier. He's in a lot of trouble if he's going to have to play him out there. Battier recognizes that. Staying up at the top of the key. He goes by. Yep, pushes it to the corner. Duhan with the lead, and cleared by Jefferson. I think Duke should have been a little bit more patient there to let Battier play with Woods. Uh. Arenas to the paint. Woods on the follow. Over the back on Battier. Woods over Battier's back. I think Woods anticipated that was going to be a shot by Arenas, Jim, and when he got out of position. He knows he missed a chippy. Yep. Take your championship game experience to a new level. A few replays from tonight's game through iVision only at the Internet's home of college basketball. CBS.sportsline.com, AOL keyword CBS Sportsline as Sanders comes back, the starter for Duke, and Justin Wessel and Eugene Edgerson, who's often been like the winning edge coming off that bench for Arizona. 
Hey, both of these coaches have won national championships. It's the first time ever in a Final Four where we have that situation, and also two coaches up for Basketball Hall of Fame voting. So it's really an interesting situation to watch them pull lineup after lineup out here, matching up with each other. Berger had a pick from Wessel, thought about it. Now they'll reset. They've gotten off good shots throughout now the start of this game. Wessel couldn't reach it, and Sanders takes it away. Blue Devils with the steal. This is not the lineup that Lou Olson would like to have out there, but he's trying to steal some minutes so he can get right and Woods back in there without any more foul trouble. Straight man-to-man -man here now by Arizona. They're both on the bench with just one, Wright and Woods. Williams on the Duke bench with two. Gardner on Dunleavy, got a lot of size advantage. Battier wanting the challenge, Edgerson, who pushed off. Just a great backup and crossover dribble by Shane Battier. Tough matchup for Edgerson, who would like to play a power forward and stay in the painted area defensively. Fourth team foul first on Edgerson. Sanders sets a big screen. Battier, though, short on the three. He was leaning on that shot. Did you, did you notice that? Yep. Gliding. Off balance. Yep. He was gliding as opposed to normally squaring up and taking a jumper. Arenas, though, he's set. Too strong again. You know, Duke has got an opportunity with some of these rebounds to get out and run. They haven't tried to get their break started. And I don't think Gilbert, Gilbert Arenas is anywhere near 100% healthy, Jim. It's kind of obvious. He's just not exploding like he has been. Now Wessel's got the job with Battier. Switch off back to Edgerson on Battier. Ten on the shot clock. The freshman, Duhan, takes note. He needs to keep the ball in his hands and go ahead and break to the basket. It's taking too much time. And that's going against Duhan. Very good job by Gardner. Duhan had to recognize at the eight-second mark to get the clear out started. Got the under-12 timeout. Duke shooting only 31% at the start. Duke has already launched eight threes in this game. They're averaging 30 attempts per tournament game, but a big note again, Williams out with the two fouls, and he remains on the bench out of this break, but Luke Walton, number four, comes in. First action of the night for Arizona. Well, Jim, the last time in this tournament that Duke really exploded with a three-point shot was that 18 for 38 threes against Monmouth. But the better teams you play against and the, and the looks they're taking away from the three, Duke is going to have to score inside or get it inside and go out. Warren Woods on his return, coming up short, tried that left-handed move again. I think both of these teams are showing each other a little bit too much respect. To the hole, Battier. Didn't have the right spin on it. Nobody finishing strong so far. Arenas backs off the challenge presented by James Gardner. Somebody's wide open. It's Woods. Again, another short one this time. Falling away. He'll head to the line for two. Tuesday on CBS, illusionist David Copperfield performs his greatest challenge ever inside a tornado of fire. An all-new special live. That's... Tomorrow night, Copperfield, tornado of fire. So that foul on Dunleavy, his first. And Billy, you talked about it, one of your Packer points. His ACC heritage, Lauren Wood, starting at Wake as a freshman when Tim Duncan was a senior. The last NCAA tournament game he played was on Arizona's floor, where they were knocked out by Stanford. Got exposed to the school, when it, a year later decided he wanted to transfer. He had seen it, liked it, and went back there. But the Duncan influence on Woods, what was that like? Well, it was really tough because Lauren was a McDonald's All-American type player, a heavy recruit, whereas Tim Duncan was not. But Duncan improved so much over his career. By the time that Lauren got there, Tim was a dominant player. And Lauren could really never adjust to that extreme very well and had all kinds of problems. And it's good to see that he's been able to get his career back on track. James, baseline jumper, rattles it home for a two. That's a big shot. James has been a very valuable player for Duke. Has played fewer minutes of late than he's normally. But he is a guy that can go ahead and hit that three-point shot. Big lift for Duke if they can give him the minutes. Easy baskets early for Arizona, but Cats have missed their last six attempts. Walton, turn around, ends the streak. Walton, a good passer, good shooter, can put up some big numbers. He's got a good head. You see some nights he steals the ball. He knows how to handle the ball extremely well. He'll be a key man off the bench. So just as we talked about James off the bench, Walton fits the same bill. 
Duhon. Over Woods. Wow, what a shot. You're talking about a shot that he threw up over a guy that's blocked 20 so far in this tournament. He gauged it, the arc, just right. He really did, Jim. You'll watch that arc as you're talking about right up over the top. Terrific job on his part. Here's the pickup full court again, and just as Lou Olson suggested, get the ball to Gardner, get out of his way. He thinks he can handle it. Just dribbling one-on-one. -on -one. Williams has come back on the floor for Duke with his two fouls. And he's guarding Walton, which is a tough task for him. Walton will take him inside. And Boozer also returned. Woods, too strong. Boozer with the board. Boy, Woods putting up a lot of shots so far for him, which takes Arizona somewhat out of their offense. He's two of six, Billy, from the field. And we're midway through the first half. Inside, left hand, and Boozer. Getting stronger every game on this return. This is his fourth game back after missing six. With a broken bone in his right foot. Absolutely critical for Duke to get an inside present scoring wise. Now they're starting to pick up the intensity a little bit. Oh, boy, oh, that could be Williams' third. He was lucky there. Arenas, and out to James. It was a How huge would now, that have been? Well, he knew it. He did a, like, a twister-like uh, move to get away from him. Again, Boozer doing a good job. He's got Woods inside. Great 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 great. What about that fake? A great drop step. Lauren Woods is occupied now, and when you have him occupied with an offensive player, he's no longer available to play that one-man zone and block the shots. Boozer had 19 in a win against Maryland. He's a bruiser again tonight with seven early. Walton steps in, gives it up, Woods. Another attempt, good this time. Good job by Lauren Woods. He's taken over the offensive post-up moves, and he's just a little bit too big for anybody that Duke puts on him. Back to the zone. Bad pass by Williams. And Woods was eyeing it all the way. That had no chance for success. So the All-American so far has not been able to go, get it going on either end of the floor. Walton's oh, pass oh, by Williams. Arenas chasing. 